Our countdown to kickoff coverage is continuing and we're heading out to Washington with Grant Paulson of Sirius XM and CBS Radio. Let me ask you about this guy Robert Griffin III, obviously filling a void that the Redskins had to fill at quarterback with out the likes of Rex Grossman among a few others. Uh, I even forgot already uh, the Mormon guy's hair, the Mormon, na uh, Mormon hair. I don't even remember what his name is. That's how bad he was. But look, Robert Griffin III, the first rookie quarterback for Washington since 1963. This was a team that went 5-11 and 11 last year. From what you've seen, obviously you follow this team. Uh, are you pleased with what you've seen? Do you think that he could turn the page for this team, possibly get them to more wins this year? Yeah, so far so good. I mean, he hasn't been asked to do a ton yet during either training camp practices or preseason games, which is all the experience we have to go off of. But what has been put on his plate, he hadn't had any problems with. The offense has been scaled back, and the scheme was pretty vanilla and basic. And He made a lot of safe, short, accurate throws, and he did them, I thought, pretty effectively and at a high level. But that all changes on Sunday because when the actual season starts and the Saints for the first time are drawing up blitzes from the parking lot, devising schemes and disguising coverages in ways that none of the teams who prepped for Griffin in the preseason did. We're going to learn more about him in the first few drives of this game than we have over the last couple of months. His skill set's electrifying. He's got Olympian speed. He's got a tremendous arm. One of the better deep ball throwers probably already in the league. Hmm. And he comes in with as much ice as anybody in probably league history based on the city he's playing in and the Heisman year he just had, the meteoric rise to fame, all the commercials he's already in. He's got a lot to prove, but he's got a chance to be pretty good. There's some good receivers around him. The Redskins were able to run the football at the end of last year. They've got a solid defense, so I think they'll have a decent rookie season. What about the running backs? You know, you talked about how good their running game was along with their defense, but, I mean, there's no Ryan Terrain here anymore. There's no Tim Hightower. They do have some solid running backs with Roy Hallou. Uh, Evan Royster, and then the sixth rounder out of Florida Atlantic University, Alfred Morris. From what I was reading on the Washington Post today, it appears that Morris may even start this game. Is he going to start, and what do you expect from the ground game this year? Well, they ran their best and, and succeeded the most on the ground at the end of last season. If you look at the yards per carry by month, December blew away the other month. They wrapped up the campaign with back-to-back 100-yard -back games by Evan Royster in weeks 16 and 17. There's a chance Royster can start this weekend. Mike Shanahan won't announce who his top tailback is. As he says, it doesn't matter. If a guy's going to average five yards a carry, who cares who is back there? And that's how he's going to pretty much operate this season. It's not going to be about naming one guy for a month at a time. It's going to be riding the hot legs for a quarter or a drive or – Go for a six or seven carry stretch. So if you play fantasy football, this probably isn't the backfield for you. I actually have leaned all along toward Alfred Morris getting the nod. I just think he had the best preseason. He started two of the three games he played in. He ran for 27 yards in his first two carries against the Bears defense, and on one of those carries, ran over seven-time Pro Bowler Lance Briggs. And the coaches really loved that run. They liked the balance he carries the football with. The body lean, he's always falling forward, he's low to the ground. He's the ideal one cut back in the zone scheme. Doesn't have very good speed, but he's just shifty, and he's tough to tackle him. He's one of those guys that you can rarely get a good hit on. I think Roy Hallou's going to be used on third downs and passing situations. He can catch the ball to the backfield better than either Morris or Royster. And Evan Royster, to me, is a nice option as you know, just a quality safety valve, second guy behind Morris to both the male and, and help pick up blitzes. All three are going to play. Whoever has the best initial couple of drives probably is going to play the most in this game. Grant, talk to me a little bit about the receivers. You know, Kyle Shanahan, it seems like he did not have very talented pieces. It appears that he does now with the likes of Pierre Garçon. You know, Santana Moss is still there. Fred Davis is still there, but they still uh, they have Leonard Hankerson and Josh Morgan. It seems like there's a lot of talent on this offense. So let me ask you this. Is Kyle Shanahan possibly now having the talent that he needs to have this offense succeed? I think so. He's got more weapons and toys to play with than he's had at any other time since he came to Washington. 
if you look at last year's passing offense, Jabbar Gaffney was the Red Team's leading receiver in catches and yards. <laughs> and no disrespect to Gaffney, but he's been in the league 10 years. He was 30 years old. He had a career season. He didn't go for 1,000 yards. They had to go get better at wide receiver. They needed someone who could make a play after the catch. So Gaffney is very reliable to run the right route and fall in a football, but he's not doing anything after that. He's going to the ground pretty quick, quickly, or he's getting tackled by the first defender on the scene. There's no make you miss and wiggle there in the open field. It just doesn't scare anybody. Pierre Garcon does. He's got very good speed. He's a physical wide out. He's going to bring an element to the Redskins that they have lacked for some time, and I think he can take the top off the defense and they'll really get open down the field running those explosive vertical routes. They're going to ask him to as their ex receiver. Josh Morgan probably starts opposite him at C. I mean, he was signed like Garcon on the first day of the league year when free agency opened. Garcon agreed to terms within five minutes of the start of the new league year. Morgan was in the first 90 minutes to come back home as a Virginia Tech product and a Maryland native. But those are the top couple options on the outside. Santana Moss will work exclusively out of the slot this season. But for the first time in his career, he's not really being asked to do anything on the edges. Everything's on the interior, and I think that'll help him maybe prolong his career some. The front seven on defense all of them are returning, which is a huge plus for the Redskins defense. However, they are fielding uh, a third cornerback and they are fielding a new a uh, fill in free safety for the likes of Brandon Merriweather. What do you think about this defense? I mean, is this going to be the best part of the Redskins in 2012? Or do you think their offense will overshadow their defense? Their defense has to be the strength of this football team. Last year, they leaped from 31st to 13th in overall ranking. They finished in the top 10 in the NFL and stats. They made a lot of strides in year two in the 34 defense. This is their third seat. Jim Haslett, the defensive coordinator, a couple different times, has pointed to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who very similarly were ranked 25th in their first year in the 34, and then they leaped to 13, like the Redskins did from 31 to 13. Then in their third season in the 3-4, the Steelers were a top five defense and have been ever since. And He thinks that's going to be the kind of jump the Redskins make again this year. More important than where they rank in yards per game, which is a statistic met metric used to determine it is ranking defensively, is the takeaways they generate, but they didn't get enough of those last year. They have to create more turnovers. The sacks they're able to put together. But they had 40 a season ago. They were on the back end of the top 10. Ideally, they can get closer to 50, because if you get that number higher, and you create more sack chances and consistent pressures, normally you'll either free the football up with sack fumbles when you get home, or you'll force quarterbacks to make quick decisions, and quick decisions are often bad decisions, and result in interception. And the third thing is they have to be a better scoring defense. 